Cubans are always on the move, going places, meeting other people, moving things around. It's all part of Cuban transportation. What? Bill Nye, the science guy. Brought to you by the foot, moving people around for over four million years. Everything around here and everything in the room you're sitting in was brought here or there by humans. See, humans are always moving things we need and ourselves all over the place. It's all part of what we call transportation. Different ways to carry things from one place to another. Without transportation, we couldn't get food or uh, have a place to sleep or meet other people. <laughs> transportation is great. Let's go! like these. As more and more people use the paths, they become worn and wider and wider. Some paths get turned into roads. We build machines to carry things over great distances very fast because we can't carry nearly as much stuff nearly as fast just by ourselves. Train tracks are paths too. Trains run all over the place. Wherever there's land and there's somewhere to go. Humans have also found ways to use rivers and we've built waterways to carry heavy loads all over the world. Now, if we want to move things really fast, we use planes, and they follow paths in the sky. No matter how we do it, we need to build a path, then make a vehicle, something to carry our stuff, then we need energy to make it roll, float, or fly. It's transportation. Isn't that cool? I wonder if there is any kind of transportation that is most important of all. Raise your hand when you think you've figured out what type of transportation is most important of all. Did you raise your hand? I hope not, because there is no type of transportation that is most important of all. They all work together in order to move people and in order to move goods in and out of our city. shop up here. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a force-filled model of arterial loading. You're right, it is. It's just like a freeway. It's a... Yeah. Huh. Watch your step, Bill. Huh? Whoa. Humans move around to find food, shelter, and to meet other humans. Hey! hey the first way people got around was on foot. Scientists think that the first paths used by humans started out as animal paths. Then humans started making their own paths so they could find uh, food and shelter. <gasps> paths and roads make it easier to move around, but they also change the environment. Some roads are so big they can be seen from space. There's others can't be seen at, uh, can't be seen at all. 
Hi, I'm Helen Thayer. A few years ago, I walked alone to the magnetic North Pole. I used just basic transportation, my feet, skis, snowshoes, and I pulled my sled behind me with all my supplies. I was totally alone except for my dog, Charlie. Well, snowshoeing is, is a very ancient form of transportation, probably one of the most ancient because it's so basic. There's lots of different ways to get to the North Pole. You can use aircraft, snowmobiles, or dog teams, but I didn't want any of those. I wanted to walk all the way using my own muscle power and nothing else. Their journey was 364 miles long, 27 days. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done. I had the hurricane force winds and the ice that split beneath my feet. Snowshoes and skis are a great form of transportation, but they're absolutely useless when it comes to trying to outrun a polar bear. And one day, polar bear almost he charged and almost got me, except that Charlie was there. He raced out, grabbed the bear by his heel, hung on, and kept the bear from attacking. Because he doesn't, he's not like us humans, he doesn't need snowshoes. Instead, he has these very special feet that are adapted to the Arctic and the snow and ice. And notice how they spread out. They're like snowshoes, there's webbing between the toes. When I finally arrived at the North Pole, I felt really great because I realized, although it was the most difficult thing I'd ever done in my life, I got there using my own two feet. If there's one thing I've learned, that if you really put your mind to it, you can walk anywhere. Boots and wheels can sink in the snow. So people have come up with other ways to get around. Skis spread your weight out. They're long and narrow. And fast. Native Americans invented snowshoes. They spread your weight out so you don't sink in the snow. People in Arctic climates still use sleds like these to haul their belongings over frozen ground. Snowshoes, sleds, skis, doesn't matter. They all work the same way. They spread your weight out so you don't sink in the snow. No, instead, you slide. Woo! <laughs> Once the wheel was discovered, people began to really get around. And they could carry a lot more, too. At least on land. Let's say I were over here, and I wanted to get over there to get uh, some food or a place to sleep or maybe meet some people. Well, I can cross the river like this, but it takes time. And, uh, probably a little bit dangerous. So that's why humans, for centuries, have built bridges across streams like this so that we can cross them more easily. Humans have been using boats for over 2,000 years. You can make your own boat. All you have to do is cut a rectangle out of the side of a plastic soda bottle. It'll look like this. Then poke a hole through the cap and through the bottom so that it looks like this. Now take the cap off and thread a rubber band through the hole. Okay, cool. Now attach it with a paper clip and put the cap back on. Now put about 20 or so pennies in the bottle so that it'll sit upright. Now pull the rubber band through the bottle and put it through the hole in the bottom. Attach that in with a paper clip too. You can make a propeller out of a plastic lid. It'll look like this. And put the propeller on the end of the paper clip. Then wind it up. And you're ready to go. Put your boat in a tub of water and let her rip. You may not 
see it right away, but ships have to follow paths too. Follow paths. Have to stay in a channel. Otherwise, the larger ships would run aground. Now, ships use buoys and beacons like this one to stay on course, to stay on the right path. It's kind of like a uh, traffic light. Instruments like these let us follow a path in the sky called an airway. It lets smaller, slower moving planes stay out of the way of big, fast ones. You can't see it, but we're on a path. Uh, Roger, clear to accelerate. Go, science guy. Great day for a ride in a grass-covered car. <laughs> See, we're on a pathway created by humans for human transportation. And you can see that these pathways have a tremendous effect on things. It's huge. It goes right through the middle of town. So any living thing that's around here is probably affected by this pathway. Seeds from plants trying to blow to another location so they can grow over there. Any animal that wants to get from here over there is going to have to deal with this path. And this is just one of the hundreds of thousands of pathways in this city. I mean, just think of the millions and tens of millions of pathways that humans have made that affect all kinds of living things all over the world. It's overwhelming. Human transportation changes the environment. Check it out. We've cut a pretty wide swath through what used to be an old growth forest. Not very many old trees growing here right now. See, every day there are more and more people using cars to get from one place to another. It's inefficient, it makes a lot of noise, it makes a lot of air pollution. Furthermore, the road itself is pretty hard on the environment. It covers up soil, soil that would otherwise have living things growing in it. So we have to find ways that are cleaner, safer, and more efficient to get around. Bicycles let us use our strongest muscles, our legs and back, to drive wheels. They're the most efficient form of transportation we know. Bicycles are pretty well worked out for traveling on land. Who knows what the future holds? I'm Jim Martinson. I lost my legs in Vietnam. And uh, I guess I'm a person with a disability that likes to get around. Necessity is the mother of invention. And I'm not sure I'm a great scientist, but I had an idea. And here they are. Everybody loves to play tennis. We had to design this chair so that it's quick. It allows us to get to the ball and turn around. Ooh. Got a water ski. I want to show you. Jacob, let's get in it. His feet go in here, sits in a cage. Cage fits right to the individual. Grabs a rope in his hand. The boat pulls him out of the water, and he can carve. Just like you would. The difference is he's sitting down, you're standing up. Designing the snow ski was the most fun. Everybody ask me how fast a chair can go. Well, these chairs are fast, fast, really fast. It's all a matter of design, the fit, and making the chair and you become one. You need it tight to the body. You need to be able to use the chair so that all your energy is going into it. The big thing we're looking for today is aerodynamics. How can we make the chair be able to flow faster, cut through the air quicker? This is what I use. This is my legs, my feet. This is how I operate. This is what makes me be able to exist in, in your world and my world. A good design keeps you moving. Yeah! Time for the 1240, right on schedule. Yeah, I'll just count them. 
Look at all these cars that go by behind me. Each one of them has one or two semi-tractor trailer truck containers on it. See that? Every one of them. Do you know how many trucks that represents? Do you know how many trucks would have to go riding up and down the highways, getting in everybody's way, trying to change lanes, making air pollution? And you know what else? You still gotta have trucks. I mean, you gotta have trucks to get that container from the train yard to the grocery store, from the train yard to the place you buy whatever it is you're gonna buy. Hardware, clothing, bedding. What's on the third floor? Did you count cars? Because I lost count. I was, I got off. I was brick. I don't know what happened. This is a farm. The food that's grown here has to get to the people that eat it. Our food comes from all over the world. Like these grapes come from the country of Chile. These carrots came from over 1,500 kilometers from here. Uh, so did this lettuce. These potatoes probably grow in another state. And these apples don't grow anywhere around here. Our food comes from everywhere. Think about it next time you're in the grocery store. It was a boat, a train, a truck, or a plane that got that food to the store. It was some form of transportation. This is a lowrider bicycle that has the old time Schwinn Forks Springer front end and the handlebars are just the way they made them in the old days. The chain, it's a regular chain, and we just uh, gold plated it. This right here was made by um, Bondo. Like, you weld a piece of metal, and then you do Bondo on there. And you learn stuff. If you buy it, it's like, you don't learn anything because you don't know how to put a bike together. When you, when you take it to a show, the judges, they look how how clean you have your, your paint job, what kind of paint job it is, how clean you have your chrome, everything. They look at every little detail. It's ready to go. Come on! I'm trapped in a late 20th century traffic jam. Mr. Scott, can't you get me out of this? She can't take any more, science guy. Are you sure? I'm giving her all she's got, science guy. Scotty, you're fired. Humans have always made vehicles and paths to make moving around easier. Whoa! One person, one car. Where does it get you? Well, it doesn't get you anywhere fast. Look, everybody's stuck in traffic. Almost every one of these cars has just one person in it. One person in it. Two tons of steel rolling down the road. Four wheels, two tons of metal. Just to move one person around. A bus can carry a lot more people than a car, using a lot less energy per person. And it takes up a lot less room on the road. Punch it! Okay. Or subway trains. We can carry a lot more people in here than you can in a car. Beautiful day in the tunnel. <laughs> See, cars get you from one place to another, exactly when you want to go there, as long as there's no traffic jam. But using cars carries a big price. Ten lanes of freeway traffic, one person in almost every vehicle. This is not an efficient use of a transportation pathway. It's loud. I can hardly hear myself think out here. And the air is terrible. It's polluted. We're supposed to be the smartest most sophisticated society on the planet. And yet, this is how we choose to get around. We've got to think this through. We've got to come up with better ideas. We've got to think this through. You see one bicycle? What? No. There's too few people in each car. If we had buses, or we carpooled, we could 
quintuple. We can do all decatuple. The number of people on this pathway. But instead, it's a mess. Oh, it's a mess. boys and girls, transportation of long ago is a lot different from transportation of today. And transportation when you grow up will be just as different. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I gotta keep moving. See ya. Goodbye now. See ya. Bye now. See ya. Bye, -bye now. See ya. Produced in association yeah, with the National yeah, Science yeah, Foundation. Yeah, bye now. See ya. Bye now. I suggest you beam me a board. A punch it. <laughs> They're giving me a hard time because I look goofy. Yes. Here it is. Let me show you goofy. <laughs> I'm not some kind of actor. I'm just trying to look goofy. We're supposed to be the most sophisticated society in the world. You sit in this car and see if you don't look goofy. People are laughing. It's a grass-covered car. And when you're in this company, that's part of the shtick. I mean, what do you think? Just watching the world go by here from a grass-covered car? I was trying to look goofy. I'm driving a grass-covered car. Yes, I was trying to look goofy.